Welcome to the Red VTV show, supported by Chapel House for the 2023 season. This week, we discuss Saints' trip to Castleford for the second time this season, as well as the TV deal. But first of all, we find out what Kev's been up to. Been on my holidays. <laughs> People were worried, Kevin. Worried, I, I tell you. I know. Well, to be fair, I've still gone to some games. I've just been giving other people a chance to get on as well. I've been behind the camera a little bit. Uh, but the past three, I have been, um, we'll call it gallivanting. Um, admittedly, only round like um, Wales and a little bit back into Shrewsbury and that. But yeah, I've just been on holiday. Absolutely fine. Um, it's lovely to see people. I think I'm taking it's my mum under different pseudonyms, asking if I'm all right because I think this is the only way she knows that I'm uh, I'm all right. Sometimes when I don't reply to her messages, uh, but no, appreciate people wondering where I am. Um, I, I'm I'm back. Excellent. People were worried you were going to be on that Wagner jet. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> um, right, Kev, back into it. Saints are still on a roll. Um, you're not the lucky charm after all. Well, maybe I should stay away. Yes. And it's the TV deal. So here is a stock image of a Sky Sports cameraman. <laughs> you couldn't even get Carl the Saints fans the stock image. No. <laughs> He had watermarks all over him, so I didn't want oh, to did use he? it. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Um, yeah, the uh, news of the TV deals come out this week. Uh, 24 million, a reduction on the 25 million on the previous deal. Um, all games will have TV cameras there. Um, the ones that aren't on TV, that clash, will be available via a streaming service, we're led to believe. Uh, over 50 games on Sky. Um a little bit, few well, a little increase on we believe free to air television on Channel Four. The details will come out shortly. Um, and video referees at every game, which is probably needed. That's probably the biggest thing that's needed out of this to to make it fair across the board, Kev. Yeah, I think when you um, when you're playing in a competition, you need to be playing under the same rules across. As you say, across the board. So not having in that case, video, then are we video. getting a new disciplinary panel? Oh no, because well, the same random rules across the board. Um, no, you have uh, if you've gone if you're going to have uh, a video ref looking at um, decisions that the on-field ref would like uh, clarification on then that should be across every single game. It shouldn't just be to the clubs who are lucky enough to be lucky or unlucky enough to be on TV all the time. So I'll look at the likes of us, Wigan, Leeds, etc. Um, and and have games, don't know, like Wakefield maybe, teams who, who are struggling during, especially the early type of the season, uh, early time in the season, and people aren't morbidly watching if a team's going to go down. Um I think you've got to do it across the same rules. I think that is a... It's good that we've got them all. I think the genie's out the bottle now for getting rid of a, a video ref. I think that's just the way that it's it's going. You, you'd you never be able to get rid of that. I think there's obviously other things that we could have, like the referee calls. Now's the time for the uh, lawmakers to be really brave and stop making referees guess. Um, based on that. And there's probably loads and loads of different things that uh, our viewers and our followers on social media will be able to add into that conversation. That's just the first one that comes to my head. Um, but yeah, it's 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 probably the right thing, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, that's your own personal opinion. Now, every game being available to view remotely, um, not necessarily televised on television, but via streaming services, uh, probably the R League app and, and various others. Can I suggest that I don't believe it's a good thing for the game? Um, I think it's Go a on. I think it's a really bad idea. Um in a game that is struggling for attendances already and away attend away crowds especially not travelling, you are now going to make it even easier for people not to to attend and be there in person. 
Um, if you're looking at tickets, which potentially for a family, you're potentially looking £60, £70 pound for a game. If they can stream it for £10, a, a nominal fee of £10, it might not even be that much, and watch it at home, especially in a lot of the games in the Super League season that we have to say don't matter. Um, what is going to attract them into the stadium if they can do it at home? And then equally, um, we've found over the last few years that people have come up with a number of nefarious means of actually streaming the games that have been on the streaming services without paying for them. So potentially the game even loses out on that revenue down the line as well. I'm not entirely sure it's a great idea. No, I understand that as well. Um, I think we're both in agreement that with regards to away fans, it's up to the home club to fill the stadium before away fans travel. I think that we're both in agreement and we both would never go against that. Um, But you're right, it it may well stop people travelling and as you say, the number of ways that people can get round streaming games which means that they don't have to pay the fiver or tenner or whatever or pay for a subscription to Sky Sports or TNT or whatever paid um, sports channels that are out there. Because people can get round it. As you say, are we shooting ourselves in the foot with it? Possibly. Um, I think I've seen people say that the game should be spread out as well. So you have games kicking off at different times on a Saturday and different times on a Sunday. Unfortunately, with Rugby League at the moment, it's a minority sport. It might be a sport that we love, but it's a minority sport. I would guess that quite a few people, like yourself, have season tickets for other sporting establishments. I mean, you might not want to go all the time, but you've still got that commitment. If you don't know when the game is on, because it's going to keep getting changed and you've not got your routine, then how do you keep a fan engaged? Our games are Friday night. We know that our games are Friday night. Are they all going to stay Friday night, with the exception of getting one moved for TV? Or are they going to be moved about because, well, you're not on telly this week, so you've got to play Sunday afternoon? And then the likes of yourself, if Everton are on uh, Sky or TNT or whatever, can't make that game because you've already got something that is booked in and has been booked in well in advance. We see how the TV companies have treated fans by changing games at, at the drop of a hat, seemingly. Whereas at least the football puts them in well before until the end of the season, obviously, when they they, they see what's going on with the league. Um, I just, I'm not entirely sure. I'd like more detail on it, but as it is, I'm not entirely sure that it's the best idea. And I think it could be tweaked to be better. If the games do go behind on, well, go on stream to go behind the paywall of like Saints TV and allow the club to manage it. Um, that mm. way, um, rather than the central service, which looks like it gets abused a little bit. Um, and what people don't understand, if they're not paying for the Sky Sports subscriptions, um, they're, they're essentially damaging the sport. There's, if they're not watching through established means, this is why the likes of Sky TV don't see the viewing figures and don't put the money back into the game. Um, so we're, we're only harming ourselves and, and, and the game ends up circling the drain a little bit. Um, now obviously if Sky have got two games live on TV a week if there's going to be a game on free to air that leaves three other games now maybe it's just me but I would have no intention of paying to watch Wakefield v Leeds I would have no intention of watching it if it was free to air so the only games that you would likely pay for are the ones involved in your own team so you've got your diehards who will go every week but it's it's your walk ups that I think will will be affected, especially in the cost of living crisis. If you can find a way of um, paying for the paying for the stream and watching it rather than turning up, I'm I'm not entirely sure that the the financials will add up on it. Um, I hope I'm wrong, um, but well, I the, think we might be sat here in three years and and be regretting it, and it might and it might disappear again. The, the, the cost of living thing is probably why people, or is the reason, people use whatever means necessary to watch games and not have a Sky Sports subscription. 
that's why because people can't afford it and and the price of things is going up we're in a lucky situation where we can go to the games we know that we never uh, we i think we have been stupidly accused of it in the past like looking down on on fans who can't go every week absolutely not this is one of the reasons we do this as well so people can have a little bit of opinion about the games but in the cost of living crisis I don't blame people for not going. Saints put out the tweet that there's 700 fans or over 700 fans going to Castleford. Now, we're in the school holidays. We've been to Castleford once. I'm sorry, Cass, at the minute, your ground isn't up to Super League scratch or absolutely it shouldn't be. You should have been kicked out of there long ago like us, Warrington and Salford had to come out of our old stadiums. If you're paying 20 odd quid to go and watch that, then 700's a good following for anybody. I don't care if you're world champions or what. I don't blame people at all for looking at this and thinking, could I do something better with that 60, 800 quid or whatever it is to pay for tickets and get across the and pay for food, drink and whatever? Could I do something better with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, listen, uh, yeah. I think we just need to clarify, this isn't about people who can't afford to go not go. Yep. I think we're just talking about the finances that will end up at the club. So for every ticket that isn't sold, the club would essentially need to sell four streams, five streams yep. to make up that. Because obviously the games aren't going to be televised for free. There's there's costs involved with cameras, broadcasts, getting the technologies put it out online. So you're essentially looking at, for, you, you need to sell four streams for every ticket that you don't sell because of, the streaming service. Um, I, I look forward to seeing the financials. I'm not entirely sure they, they'll be able to do it as cheap as people might think. I think it might end up being a, a 15 or £20 fee. It might have to be. But but still on that, um, you say, like going to Cass, I don't know what the, the prices are for, for Cass. Um, but you, you look at it and think, well, if it's 15 to 20 quid, that's still less than one adult. Yeah, what do you do with a Friday night? Do you, do you do you save that money? All get a, like with the rest of it, get a takeaway. Um, all sit in front of the telly. Plus, as you say, family three, four. You pay for less than an adult. You've probably got another adult and a child or two children watching the game. All that money's come out and he's sat at home. Really, I think we've got to be careful because I think the money's obviously in the TV stuff but you've got to be able to then make sure a ground is filled. That's on the clubs as well, but you've got to be able to make sure a ground's filled because who wants to watch? And I'll use those Saints versus Hull in front of a stadium where there's 6,000 rattling about in an 18,000-seater stadium or 18,000-capacity stadium because don't blame Hull fans for not travelling over the M62 on Friday night. I say it's fans have said, well, actually, it's now cheaper for me to stream them by season tickets. Yeah. Um, I am glad it hasn't gone to the zone who were linked, uh, because for me, that would have meant the game would have essentially become out of sight, out of mind. Um, I think it needs to be on Sky Sports, um, because potentially, if you if you go to the zone and interest dwindles even more, and what happens at three years' time if the zone decides, you know what, this hasn't been worth our while? Sometimes it is the better the devil you know. Um, and at least you know Sky are continuing to fund the game. I think they've done well to get pretty close to the last TV deal because not only now are you competing against other sports, you are also now competing against women's sports as well, uh, which yeah. has had a meteoric rise. You just have to look at the, the crowds that are going to watch the women's football. The crowds that are coming to watch the women's rugby league now 100%, 200%, 300% higher than they were a couple of years ago. And that yeah. trajectory is only going to keep going up. Um, and the standard is getting better. So I think they've done well to get what they got off Sky. Yeah, just hopefully they can get the standard of um, product that is put out um, and produced by Sky. Gets Everybody's going to moan, but... When you hear the same moans week in, week out, let's see a different point of view. I've said this before. Let's see a different point of view. 
from different players. I think they've started doing that now, which is great. It's it's great that they've started getting players who've just retired into the studio. It's what they need to do. You can't just have the same voices over and over again. It's I mean, well, last week we had Kev Cullen, we had Dave and Kev on instead of us two. And it's a different set of faces. So it's different voices, whether you agree with them, whether you, I don't know, think that they're talking absolute rubbish, you think they're better than us two. Maybe not. Um, Kev, it was, <laughs> Kev, it was in the con- it was in our contract that our fan reaction has to be done by Dave and Kev. Yeah, true, yeah. yeah. How lucky are we that we have got <laughs> such great standings. And do you know what? Can I just say thank you to Dave and Kev. Did an absolutely yeah. tremendous job. Um, didn't think we were getting our job back. No, well, it's a, it's a good job we've just got the uh, the login to the Zoom, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's. Um, yeah, it's got the microphone. No, I'll go and get it. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you do. Um, yeah, and, and as long as Sky keep up with that with the in studio stuff, with anything like graphics, any innovations they could come in with, then fantastic. I know they're good. They're obviously. Um, They've got a lot of irons in a lot of fires, as you say, with different sports, women's sports and the likes. But don't just leave us as a poor, poor relative in that. Build us up. You want people with their eyes on the on the telly, don't they? And as you say, if it's Hull versus Hull KR, and that's on of a Friday night and Saints aren't, because Saints have got like the Saturday afternoon game or whatever, you want to be able to watch it and come away going, I really enjoyed that, really enjoyed the insight, really enjoyed who they spoke to, really enjoyed the pieces that they, they did with the whole KR captain, with the young lads coming through at Hull. It, brilliant. They just need to continue to improve. OK. On to this week's game then, Kev. Saints travel to Castleford for the second time this season. Uh, an unchanged squad. Uh, will it be an unchanged team? Um, I'd be surprised if there were any changes. To be quite honest with you, um, yeah, I, I just I think that the lads who've come in and put the hands up. Obviously, we we spoke about George George Delaney an awful lot, um, or you and whoever's been on us spoken about him an awful lot. But even the likes of um, Ben Davis, who I know Paul Wellens has said has had to be patient for his chance. Uh, Sam Royal has come in and done a job. Dare I say there's even been improvement due to Matt Sharpness from Dan Norman. Definitely. Um, he's, I don't know, I would say stats are like a bikini, but his stats from the weekend, um, the last game, he's seven metres average gain, shouldn't be sniffed at. And this is what happens when your reserve crew need to come in and, and step up. They're not going to drop in and, Dan Norman isn't going to come in and be James Graham at the height of his career. Sam Royal isn't going to come in and be Chris Joint at the height of his career. And Ben Davis isn't going to come in and be uh, Jamie Lyon. They need that time to get up to speed. And that's what the lads have done. Now, although we've got five games to go, second is well within our sights now if we can win out. We're playing Wakefield this week. Cass, no, sorry. Cass this week, Wakefield next week. If you want to look at somebody like Matty Foster, given that we've got such a horrific disciplinary record and injury record this season, and you may at some point need to rely on the likes of Matty, if you're going to play him, are these the games to do it? Yeah, it's not a bad show, to be fair. Whether it's um, this week, it's a tough one going over to Cass, always is. Um, It's... And the, they've got fire in the bellies. So we're playing two teams who are obviously fighting for their lives, aren't we, in the next two weeks? Um, but, yeah, I, I, I don't think that that's beyond the realms of fantasy call for Matty to be included. Um, I'm not entirely sure where he would be um, unless we we kind of put Sioni possibly a little bit more down the middle um, and gave the likes of Louis or Dan Norman a week off, but I can't see it this week, mate. I think it's just going to be same 17. Yeah. Unless there's a knock, I don't think it'll happen. Just obviously with Mike Critch 
Lee doing a piece in the St. Town Star saying he's knocking on the door and he's in the conversation, but obviously Wellow saying he can't make any promises. And I think the reason it won't happen, and I'm not saying saying that coaches look at fan opinion that much, but if Wellow decided to put like that Matty Foster into the squad this week and we somehow fell on a banana skin, slipped on a banana skin and we lost, you can see him getting crucified for it if it wasn't needed. Yeah, listen, he's got big decisions that, that he makes all the time. You look at last week where John Benison came straight back in for T. Ritson. That's a big call. And uh, out some of our fans, some of our fans have flip-flopped over T. Ritson. It was the greatest thing since sliced bread when we signed him. Uh, the thing we needed, then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, we need John Benison back in. It's all right to have an opinion, but let's not flip flop it all the time. Um, I think John got the shout to cut. Well, again, reading uh, Mike Critch in the uh, star, he got the shout because he can cover a number of positions, which is what we need when we were playing with uh, potentially bust up players. Um, it's nothing against T. Rickson, but the lad's playing his first full time season at this level. It's it's a different different kettle of fish for him, um, and he he probably needs this season to settle and see if we keep him on next year. And if we did, it'd be it'd, there'd be improvement in him next year, absolutely improvement. Um, but the, there's big choices to make all the time. If he, if Paul Wellers makes one that Matty Foster comes in and one of the other lads has to drop out, that won't be the reason that we win or lose the game. There's another sixteen players out there who can cover for one, if needed. Unfortunately, that's not how the entirety of social media will see it. <laughs> I know. I, I, we can, you tell, can you tell I've been on holiday? <laughs> My naivety's back. Yes. Um, cast squad. Now, I wish we were top of the league, eight points clear. We could play the kids at cast like we did last year. We could give them the two points and then we could help them out by stuffing Wakefield next week because I would much rather see Castleford in Super League than Wakefield Trinity, who offer about an inch more than Huddersfield do. <laughs> so you'd send Huddersfield down first? If we could. The, the, uh, neither of the, them teams offer anything to Super League. You talk about Cass... You know I've got a soft spot for the jungle, yep. Weldon Road. It reminds me a little bit about how Nosey Road used to be, maybe slightly worse. But I think they've got a passionate fan base um, who follow the team, get behind them a little more than Wakefield do. Um, and I think they would be a loss to Super League. Uh, and I'm really, really glad that they managed to edge ahead of Trinity last week by putting them in their place. Um, two points clear, slightly worse points difference. So, yeah. We'll just have to stuff them both. Yeah, it's... Um, as I say, it's a tough place to go. I'm not saying that I don't enjoy Weldon Road, um, but I'm saying I don't think it's fit for Super League anymore. Um, I, I think if, if you've got clubs being warned about the positions in the league, however many years ago that was, um, and then it's not followed through, I think that's just stupid, really. I know they've got the plans. We will get probably stopped after the game on Friday and told about the plans. Hopefully they are coming on. I'm glad that if they are going to do anything, they're going to stay there, though, and redevelop and not have to, say, move miles and miles away. Um, that said, I love the stat from this squad, that this squad is the third squad to face Saints this year, picked by the third different coach to face Saints as head coach of Castleford this year. You know times are dire when you're not playing kids, but your squad is 39, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45 and 46. And they're the changes yeah. you've had to bring in to try and ensure survival. Um, yeah. Danny Ward, I'm surprised it took him so long to, to get another post in Super League, given... 
his track record. I thought he, he's a decent coach. I thought his chances would have come before now. He's made two changes this week. Brad Martin and Will Tate come into the squad with Nathan Massey and Jack Broadbent dropping out with Knox. Um, listen, Kevin, it could be a banana skin. We, we need to be on our game. Yes, definitely. I think after beating the nearest and dearest last week, the first away win of the season, I think these will be bang up for it. They'll have seen that we're getting results and hopefully starting to string together a bit of performance as well as a result. Um, but I think they'll they'll be looking at us and go, we can have these here. They might be third, might be joint on points with second, but we want it, we need it. Saints have got top six now, all sewn up, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Um, hey, Kev, do you remember when people said earlier in the year that we thought we were going to miss out on the playoffs? Looks awkward that now. Um, but I think I think these will be bang up for it. I think these will be bang up for it. And if we're not, if we're ever so slightly off, it'll make it trickier. I'm not saying we won't win if we're not at our best, but if Castleford kind of try throwing it about, try trip plays. If the weather is all right as well on Friday to, to well, it's in Castleford's favour, whether that's raining. I think it's showers meant to be all day in Castleford, maybe drying up as we get towards kickoff. Um, if we get to um, kickoff and it's a little bit greasy and it, it kind of fits Castleford a little bit more, they handle them, the conditions a bit better, then it, it could be a tough game. Um, I mean, we look at that the Salford result where we're seemingly down and out. I saw the uh, the reaction at half time that we're getting seasons over. It's all done and dusted, and then we win the game. Um, could end up reading them for myself actually as the game goes off. Yeah, um, the carrot is obviously dangled on Friday. When are we going to second? With Wigan not playing away in France until Saturday evening. A game that won't be easy for them there. Um, so, listen, top two finish in our sights. What's your prediction for Friday? Um, I will go Saints by 14. I'll go Saints by 10. Just don't, don't, want, don't want to wreck Castleford's points difference too much. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> that's very what, and then Saints by like 48 the week after. Yes. And do you know what? I think Cass fans would probably take that. If you're offered them now, a, a, a small loss to us, um, but we absolutely banjo Wakefield. I tell you what, if the disciplinary try and do us on Monday morning, I think we'll have Cass saying, no, 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 them tackles were perfectly fine. <laughs> What's, what is the points difference? I'm just trying to get me four here. Um, yeah, two, two, minus two nine six for Cass and minus three fifty for Wakefield. Yes. Um, and obviously Wakefield this week they have got Salford away. <sighs> Tough game. Could go either yeah. way. That. Yeah, I, I think. I think. Sorry, Wakey. I think Salford just keep on pulling out results. So when you look at Wake, just I know this is Trinity TV now. When you look at Wakefield's last five games, they have got Salford away, then us, then Catalan, then Lee, and then Hulk Ayala at home. Where's Lee at? Lee. Oh. So you, you get the impression that they've got to win two games. Without yeah. Cass winning, without Cass winning another one, um, yeah. Cass's running is obviously us. Warrington away, guaranteed win. Hull FC at home, winnable. Yeah, Wigan away, probably not. Yeah, Leeds no. away, winnable. Yeah, they, they they've got essentially aside from us, three out of the last four are winnable games. So, yeah. fingers crossed for the Cass Tigers. Let's hope it just doesn't start this Friday night. Are you going to be turning up in like amber and black or something on Friday when you pick me up? No, Kev, just me tiger tail. Mm. 
Right, I'm having another six weeks off. Right, see you later. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you on Friday night for the Instant Fan Reaction. I guarantee Kev will be tailing in my wake. <laughs>